We see it all the time on social media, blogs, books possibly, and maybe even just sometimes from the people in our lives. But there is the lore of the super homeschool mom. You know that mom. She cooks everything from scratch. She makes her own homeschool lessons. She has really low body fat. and She's super lean and trim. She sews all of her family's clothing. She throws great parties and celebrations. Her kids can speak three foreign language. You know, you get it. <laughs> I could go on and on. And maybe this is a little bit extreme. But what if we even took all of those and more and we just took it down a couple of notches? Is it still possible for that to be a real and realistic woman? I'm going to share my thoughts today about can you really do it all? Welcome to Little by Little Homeschool Podcast, where you'll learn tips and strategies that will empower you to home educate your children. I'm Lee Nguyen, a homeschool mom of over 12 years, which includes two graduates. When I started homeschooling, I was pretty much on my own and was desperate for encouragement and help. My mission is to be a source of encouragement and help to you. Whether you are just beginning your homeschool journey or you're deep into the homeschool lifestyle, Little by Little Homeschool wants to help you stay the course because all the time you are investing into your children is completely worth it. If you're ready to take your homeschool to new levels, keep listening. As women, and I don't know why we do this, but we do it. Or maybe it's just me. If it's just me, please call me out on it. But I have a sneaking suspicion that it is you as well. But we will look at our friends. We will look at those on social media. We don't really know, but we feel like we know them. And we will combine multiple women, maybe from your in real life friends, as well as friends and people that you follow online, and we'll combine them into one woman. And we will think, well, she's doing it all. Is she really? She might be showing you stuff on social media, but is she showing you everything? Probably not. And I hope not. I really hope not. And even with your friends, they might look like they have it all together. We can all pretty well fake it. And unfortunately, I actually do not say that we should do that. I don't think we should fake it among our close relationships. I think we should be honest and at appropriate times open up to them. I don't think that we need to let the world and basically strangers to our real life know on social media. Yes, there are times that we can recount a story, we can talk about something so that we can encourage others. And that's a really good thing to be able to do when you're in the right place for it. But we often can combine too many people into one woman. And then we take ourself and we compare ourself right now where we are with her. It can even be you comparing yourself right now at home, homeschooling a bunch of younger children, and you are comparing to possibly maybe a sister of yours or a sister-in-law or a friend or someone that you know from church or out in the community who has older children. And maybe she is not homeschooling them. So she has older children and in public school and you are comparing. Can any of these women that we are thinking about individually or collectively, can any of them do it all? What's your guess? <laughs> I'm gonna share mine. Not really my guess, but I'm going to share my thoughts in just a minute. I'm also going to share my journey through different seasons and the priorities that I have after I share some ideas for you because I don't want my story, my, I guess, my journey to influence you in any type of way. So stick around after, towards the end of the episode, I'm going to share more about that. So the hot question here on the table is, can you... Yes, you. Can you really do it all? The answer is no. You can't do it all. You have to pick your priorities for right now. That mom that I introduced you to at the beginning of the episode, she does not exist. Yes, there are moms out there who might cook from scratch and sew all of their kids' clothing, but maybe her house isn't as clean and tidy as yours. Or maybe her kids are just home a lot, but yours are involved in ministries and community sports, whatever it is. There are areas that we have to make a priority, and then there's areas that we just have to let go. And I know it's cliche to say, but it really depends upon your season in life. So you have to pick what are your priorities right now. Don't worry about the future and don't pine 
after yesterday. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be thinking about right now, this day and then tomorrow and the following week and coming up into your next homeschool year. That's not what that means. What it means is in a big picture, not to worry about tomorrow. We know the Bible even says that, right? In Matthew, book of Matthew, I think it's Matthew 634. For quite a few years, that was my favorite verse because I needed to hear it, not to worry about the next day. But when I say don't worry about tomorrows, just don't worry about the overall big tomorrows or the next season. Let's just focus on this season right now because that is where you're at. And when we focus on where we are at in that season of life, we can then figure out the priorities. So how do you choose your priorities? Well, we're going to start with the assumption and the premise that your priorities include these couple already. And that would be your relationship with God. That would be your relationship with your husband and your relationship with your children. We're going to assume that God, husband, and children are a priority. If they are not, then that is a good place to start and to evaluate and push away the other things and get those priorities solid, and then we can choose others. So let's go back to that. How do we make God a priority? I know in a couple, in an episode, or maybe a couple episodes in the past couple weeks, I have mentioned about having time quiet time to read God's word and possibly maybe read devotional books, having prayer time. And so how do you make God a priority? Is that a priority for you? If it's not, then really think about how you can begin implementing that as a priority. And you're like, I don't even know where to start. Like I just said, just start with reading the Bible. Just sit down and read a chapter in the Bible. Now, if you're not really well versed in where to read, maybe start in the New Testament. And if you've never read the Bible, start in the book of John and just read one chapter, close in some time of prayer. And there you go. And you can build on that. You might find yourself just so engaged with the chapter that you're reading that you continue to read. And maybe it starts off with just five minutes and it grows into 15 minutes and grows into 30 minutes and see where that goes. But making God a priority. It also means making God a priority in your collective worship with other believers because they can encourage you, they can come alongside you, and having relationship with them, going to a church service and listening to God's word being preached and and hearing things that the Holy Spirit can convict you about. So that's all kind of wrapped into one. The second thing to make a priority is your relationship with your husband. And if you have a bunch of small children, that sometimes can be really difficult. And it can also be difficult because when our children are young, we are used to mothering everybody and our instinct for mothering comes out and we can sometimes tend towards one of two ways in that we want to mother our husband and he doesn't always appreciate that. Or we say, you are a grown man. I have these one, two, three, four, five, ten children that I am mothering. You're on your own. And we can put aside maybe some of his needs and really making a priority with him is having some type of connection, making sure that you connect maybe during the day or you connect in the evening, having a time where you have maybe a date night. And I know that I've talked about us doing Friday night date nights just at home, putting the kids in the room. They're older and could do it. Maybe if your kids are young and they can't be left alone, you get them to bed and phones are out of the room and there is nothing else that needs to be done. Get everything cleaned up, get dinner cleaned up and anything else that's not cleaned up, it can wait until the next day and have that time where you guys connect and you talk and you share about just your week. Sometimes we can just be like, I don't even know how to connect. We'll just share about your day. Start there with that. But making the relationship with our husband a priority because when our children get older and they all move on, they move out of the house and they have their own lives, which is what we really want. We know deep down in our hearts, that's what we want as moms. Although at times it's very difficult to let go, but then it's, still you, you and your husband, make sure you have those times of connection. And then the priority of having our relationships with our children. And this goes to even just the basics. When they are younger, the priority of making sure that their needs are met, their needs for eating and drinking and sleeping and being clothed and loved. Those are the basic needs and then wanting to build on that and giving them some of their wants, and then including also homeschool, which we'll get to in a middle in the minute. But this is just focusing on the priority of your relationship and you're taking care of your children. And as they get older, they can begin to meet some of their own needs. 
and then eventually some of their own wants, but the relationship continues. So we are going to go on the premise here that God, husband, and children are a priority. I do have a couple of podcast episodes about keeping up with your relationship with your kids and how to bond with them in the different age ranges. I will drop one of those in the show notes. And then if you look at the show notes of that episode, it should bring you to some of the others and kind of like rabbit trail you through those different stages and ages of kids. So let's just assume that God, husband, and children are a priority. And if they're not, push aside the other things and make those a priority. And then when you're when you're feeling like confident and you're doing well in those, then you can build on that. So obviously, the next priority would be homeschooling because this is a homeschool podcast and you are home educating your children. So we are going to now focus on homeschooling. And how do you make that a priority? This is also going to be different in different ages and stages of your family. You have possibly a bunch of younger children. And you say homeschooling includes an hour tops five days a week. And it might be scattered throughout the day because they're small and there's just little bits you do. And there's a lot of informal education that happens throughout the day. You might even have older kids and say they are pretty well independent. And I only have one hour of homeschool that I do with them. And it doesn't matter if that's how you want to do that. Maybe that is just how you are overall. You might say my kids run the gamut of all the different ages. But for me, I like to focus on them having a lot of different independent learning. And we are maybe a bit more unschooling. And we only want to do about an hour of structured a day. This is going to be where you decide what is your style? How do you want the feel of your homeschool? And this is where your homeschool blueprint can come alongside you. So if you are not familiar with that, I encourage you to go over to littlebylittlehomeschool.com backslash blueprint and the link is in the show notes. So we're going to assume now that homeschooling is amongst your top four. So we have God, husband, children, homeschooling. Now, what about all the other priorities? (laughs) You're like, there's a lot of them. I know there are. Take some time to evaluate and pray on where to spend your time. I'm going to assume that the basics are already kind of figured out that you have figured out that yes, you need to feed everybody and included in feeding everybody isn't just cooking the meal. It is planning out the meals. It is making sure that you have all the ingredients that you need, which might include going grocery shopping, ordering things online. And then it includes making sure that, say, the meat is taken out of the freezer and it's thawed out in time and then actually cooking the meal and cleaning up from the meal. (laughs) There's just a lot that goes into that. But we can decide how much of a priority is that. Do you want quick and simple meals? Or do you want things that are slower and more from scratch? And that really depends upon what your goals are. So let's think about how do you want to spend your time? That mom I talked about in the beginning who's making everything from scratch and all those things and everything, I told you earlier, she's missing some things. There's no possible way that that mom even exists. If she does, then she is superwoman. But Superwoman is not real. So, (laughs) oh, hopefully that's not like a spoiler alert for any little kids that are listening. (laughs) But evaluate and pray and where to spend your time. Realistically, after you have God, husband, children, and homeschooling, there's only time for a few major priorities after you have those top four. So here are some examples. And I wouldn't suggest adding more than just a couple, like one, two, three, max, because you are going to max yourself out. You're going to burn yourself out. You're going to run yourself very thin. And some moms are okay with that. I was not okay with that. I couldn't run super thin and give every area of my life just a little bit. I wanted to give the most amount that I could to each of the priorities. And in order to do that, we have to narrow them down. So here are just a couple examples of What could be some other priorities that you're going to choose from after you have your top four good and settled and in place? And that would be priorities of extended family. Maybe your family does a lot together. Well, that's going to be a priority. But maybe right now you don't live near any extended family and you call to grandparents once a week and talk to them for about 15 minutes. Well, that's still going to be a priority, but it's not going to be a priority for every single day or most days of your week. Some other priorities would be health, maybe the health of yourself or the health of your husband or the health of your children. Maybe you have someone in your family that has a struggle and you're saying, this has to be a priority. I have to forsake some other things because we have to get this certain 
issue or this certain concern under control and I need to do research and I need to get them to maybe some specialists and we have to see what path we need to take in order to heal that person. Nutrition, this could also include maybe wanting to cook everything from scratch and I have moved myself and my family over the many years and if I was to tell myself now after 23 years of marriage if I was to look at myself 23 years ago who literally didn't know how to boil an egg and we made tuna well I made tuna helper and hamburger helper that was about all that I knew how to make um let's see box macaroni and cheese my poor husband. But if I was to look now and be like, you're making roasts in the oven and you're cooking chicken breast. Well, I like my, my family loves things with skin on it. So um, chicken thighs or cooking whole chickens, I would just be or like, that's not even, I'm not even the same person. So know that it, that is a progression. And for most of these things, it's not like a jump straight in and be able to do it at a hundred percent, do a little bit at a hundred percent. So maybe sports, sports might be important to your family, might be a priority for your kids or for your entire family. It might be something like exercise and working out or at least going for walks. Might be things like home maintenance. Maybe you have a home that needs a lot of work and that has to be a priority. Or maybe you have another home that you've purchased and that you're flipping and that is a priority right now in this season of life. Maybe it's just some DIYs. Maybe you enjoy just fixing up some things and changing some things in your house that aren't really necessary in order for it to function. It's not like the hot water heater that broke, like that's like maintenance and that's necessary, but maybe it is wanting to beautify it and to do some things that just make you feel like the home is more cozy and more of your home. Maybe it is cleaning. You feel like you can function better when your house is in order and things are maybe if it's spick and span, you have to be able to eat off the floor. Or maybe you're like, I just want it cleaned up enough that I wouldn't be mortified if somebody was to come over. If you are struggling in this area with knowing when to clean, how to clean, how to even set things up and how to get the things done that are important to you in this season, that is where the tidy home will come alongside you. And I encourage you to go over and get all the information for that at littlebylittlehomeschool.com backslash tidy home. And the link for that is in the show notes as well. Maybe ministry right now is important to you. Maybe it's something that you just do volunteering at your church Or maybe you have a part-time job of helping out. Maybe you are the children's director at your church. It could just be volunteering for maybe civic organizations or in your church or just volunteering and just with different groups or one group. It doesn't have to be different groups. Maybe relationships with friends. That could be a priority for you. So let's wrap this up and then I'm going to share with you my progression of priorities just to kind of give you an idea. And you might be able to guess if you've been listening to what is this like 270 some episodes, you might have figured out some of this stuff. Hopefully I can throw in some things that you wouldn't have guessed. But let's make sure that God, husband and children are a priority. Then we have our homeschool, which really would depend upon what your focus is, your style is. And if you're like, I don't know, that's where homeschool blueprint will come in, as well as all of the episodes. Most of the episodes on this podcast have to do with homeschool. So you'll be able to find most of the answers just right here on the podcast for you. And then evaluate and pray about what are the next couple of top priorities. And we have to be okay with letting some of the other things just go and know that it is just a season. Remember, Don't worry about maybe what you used to do, what used to be a priority before you had children, or what used to be a priority before you started homeschooling. And don't worry then, don't think and pine after those things from yesterday. And don't worry about what is my party going to be in this next season of life? No, just do right now. Do this really well. So I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis of some of the priorities that I had now before kids. I mean, that was completely different. We're not even going to talk about that because that's a whole nother life. (laughs) Feels like that never happened. I feel like I've had kids forever. Well, 21 years now. But when my kids were young, had babies and toddlers and preschoolers, really the top priorities were them and just being home just doing what we needed to do, what everybody needed every day, and then adding in some of the wants, but really just hunkering down. And my world got very, very small. And at the time, I didn't appreciate it. But looking back now, I really appreciate it. So if you are in this season, I encourage you that it is okay. If your priorities are just those couple of top that I said we need to make a priority, God, husband, children, that's okay. Let that be the priority right now, knowing that It won't be like that forever. You'll be able to add on some priorities. 
when my kids were then a little bit older, the priority was, yes, it was them and we weren't quite homeschooling yet. I guess then we moved in transition to homeschooling. So them and the homeschool and yes, God and husband also. But then a really big priority for me was friends. I find that when we have young children, having friendships and relationships with other moms is really important. And spoiler alert, as you get older, not that it's not important, but as we get older, because our kids are older, they're involved in different things and we're so stretched thin that to be honest, if I am not running around with my kids, we'll say this would be probably in the past like five to seven years or so. If I'm not running around with them or doing something with them, I'd rather just be home quiet and not going out. And so during the time when my kids were young, friendships were a big priority. We did a lot of dinner or meeting them out for dessert. We did a lot of hosting. I found that it just worked really well for us just to have everybody over. I would put my kids to bed and whether it was in the summer, we would have a party on the outside on the on our back porch. Or if it was in the winter, we'd all be We had a finished basement and a fireplace down there and just play maybe board games or something. But friends were a big priority then. As my kids got older, my priorities kind of shifted. We ended up moving as well. And at that point, then I had zero friends (laughs) where I was living and my home. And we had an old farmhouse. And so there for maintenance and then as well as DIY and my kids and homeschooling them, that was the priority. And I got back into ministry doing stuff with my with a church volunteered um also did that when my kids were a little bit younger as well but right now in this season of life my kids they still are a priority it's just a lot different because they are running here and there as i am recording this right now it's just myself and my husband at home he is working he works from home and my two boys are both at work and my daughter's not living at home right now. So I'm like, okay, this is just where I am. So that is also another priority is this podcast. There were times where I tried to put in a side hustle and I would try to ramp it up to be really big and it just almost broke me each time. And I had to then bring it back down to what was manageable. It was still a priority when I was blogging and doing the DIY stuff. It was still a priority But it wasn't as much of a priority as it was to some of my blogger friends. And that was okay because that was their high priority. And that's all right. That worked for them. And some of them are doing really well with it. And I'm so happy for them. But right now in this season, this podcast is a priority for me. And I love it. I love to be able to connect and encourage all of you. The next thing that is a big priority for me right now that I have found in the past year and a half is exercise and my health. After going through a big shift and suddenly gaining a bunch of weight, I did do an episode, I think back in the winter or spring about that, and then started to really learn how I was going to be able to fuel my body better. And so there are things that I don't get to do. I don't do as much DIY now because I would rather spend that 45 minutes to an hour of working out than maybe painting a random wall a different color just because I felt like it. And so you can kind of see how my priorities have changed. And as far as friends, yes, I have friends. And again, like I mentioned, friends, we all have older kids and we see each other in passing. I have a get together once a month at my house and that's kind of it. I'll see them at church or we'll get together once in a while, but it's not as much of a priority and that's okay. And I don't feel guilty about it at all. Okay. This episode is getting a little bit long. I'm sorry. I was trying to keep it short and sweet, especially for the summer, because I know that you are really busy, but hopefully My story and sharing my experience will help you to see that sometimes these priorities are just temporary and that's okay. We will continue to grow and shift into the next season and there'll be some other things that are a priority. If you are enjoying this podcast, I would love to be able to hear about that and I would love for all others as well to be able to hear about that and you can do that best by leaving a rating and a review. So a rating is where you just maybe hit those stars, hopefully a five star. And a review is where you actually kind of write out some of your thoughts about the podcast. And it gives others a good idea as to whether or not this is a podcast that they would enjoy listening to. So if you can take a moment now at the end of this episode to leave a rating and review, I would so appreciate it. If you have left a rating review, I would ask then that maybe you share this episode or another episode or just the entire podcast with a friend. You can simply send it to them via a text or maybe through social media, but I would appreciate um, just some help in that. It really does help the podcast out. So 
Thank you for being here today. Just know that you can't do it all. You can do a bunch of things really well. And guess what? Nobody is doing it all. None of us moms are doing it all. We have to choose our priorities. And I pray a blessing over you that as you begin to examine your priorities, that you're okay letting some of those other things go. I will see you back here real soon. Thank you for listening, friend. I'd love to connect with you more. You can find social media links in the show notes and share this episode with a friend who could use a boost to her homeschool. See you back here real soon.